All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to start off by saying Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai. Call Halal La Yahweh by Shemi Yahweh Shai, which means all praises to the Father Yahweh in the name of the Son, Yahweh Shai. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. <laughs> Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect that scattered abroad. Teaching his word in sincerity and truth. All right, this is going to be my second take on this lesson. I did a show earlier outside, and um, I was in the park, and uh, it didn't go well. So I'm just here again to uh, go back over the show I did today. And um, Lord's willing, uh, it'll be edifying to those of the whole four elect. All right, and as you see the title, Good versus Evil. All right, good versus evil, Jacob versus Esau, because the good is Jacob and the evil is Esau. All right, and that's the storyline, you know, the main, <clears throat> the main, main uh, subject when it comes to the end. Okay, even from the beginning. All right, because uh, the Lord has always been with his chosen seed. Let me turn this down. The Lord has always been with his chosen seed, and that was through the line of Adam, all right, down to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, and Esau, which was really that spirit of Esau was back in the garden, okay, down to Cain, you know, from Cain uh, to Esau, all right, and um, when you uh, get understanding of the scriptures, you know that, um, well, let me say this, according to Edris, you know, he was speaking with the Most High, all right? And the Lord told him that the end of the world is Esau, and Jacob is up next to follow. So we know that when Esau is ruling, and especially in this second term, the second term of his rule, because first he was, what, the Greeks, then he was Rome, and now this is the second leg of Rome, all right? The same, you know, it's the same men back reincarnated that was ruling in Rome, you know, at the time they hear doing the same thing. This is the second leg of Rome, which is America, that when he falls and his kingdom falls, Jacob is up, ne up next to follow. And this is why, you know, through the scriptures, we can clearly see that we're living through prophecy. Prophecies are the scriptures. All right. Um, so these is a, a lot of precepts I have here. You know, I don't know if I'm going to go through all of them, but let's just read through them. Right. So this is. um good versus evil so this is ecclesiasticus also known as sirach in the apocrypha is 30 chapter 33 verse 11 and much knowledge the lord have divided them and made their ways diverse all right and who's the lord talking about he's talking about the elect all right it says and much knowledge the lord have divided them and made their ways diverse you know, this reminds me of the precept in Jeremiah where he says the portion of Jacob is not like them. All right. Because the elect is diverse. OK, let's say the elect is divided from the elect, <laughs> you know, and that could be a stumbling block for someone. But what I'm saying is, is that the Lord's elect who he's going to deliver. All right. Are not. All right. In the, in the manner of the chosen which is the people of the Lord, you know, these men and um, say the, those women, whoever it may be a part of the household of those men and children, the elect, the one third. All right. The hundred and forty four thousand. All right. They are of another fashion. You know, they are what the Lord's favorites, the Lord's chosen, chosen, because there is a chosen within the chosen. So this just clearly lets you know that the Lord have divided, not only he divided within his nation, but he divided within the nations. All right. Going back to, uh, I believe that was in um, Deuteronomy where the Lord said he separated the nations. All right. And here it is. You got this Edomite. He wants us to be all as one, you know, one, one nation under God. Well, that's not so only nation that's blessed under Yahweh, because that's the name of the most high is Israel. All right. And that's starting with the elect, because even in this time now, 2019, you got the chosen, 
as a nation, which are the so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Hispanics, Native and Seminole Indians, two thirds. All right. Of these people, the most high is not looking at them as Israelites. They're still Gentiles to the Lord. The ones that are Israelites to the Lord is those that have been, that have been woken up and teaching his truth and sincerity and walking in his truth sincerity. All right. You know, and this is the reason why two thirds is going to be judged. So anyway, it says in much knowledge, the Lord have divided them and made their ways diverse. Some of them have he blessed and exhorted and some of them he sanctified and set near himself. But some of them have he cursed and brought low and turned out of their places. You know, now when he said when it says he set near himself, you know, that reminds me of uh, King David. You know, King David was the apple of the Lord's eye. All right. Dearly beloved by the most high. You know, was that Psalms 18? You read that. You see how the Lord came in fashion to save David when he was in trouble. Well, that's the elect, man. All right. The Lord is clearly going to come for us, brothers, in a time of need. Those that, you know, of the elect and which I hope to be a part of, man. You know, that elect is something else. You know, the most favorite of the Lord. The first fruits, the spirits created, the first spirits created under Yahweh Shai. <laughs> All right. So the elect is very important to the most high and, and the most high dare you Edomites to touch the apple of his eye. All right. Because this is the fall of your kingdom. <laughs> you know, we understand that when they go in and start forcing this RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast, <laughs> they declare in World War Three, they're going to come for the elect. But then. The Lord, Yahweh Shai, is going to crack those clouds. So in the midst of your war, you're going to end up fighting and turning all as one to fight against our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. <laughs> all right. So it says, but some of them have he cursed and brought low and turned out of their places. Verse 13, as the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the in his in the hand of him that made him to render to them as liken him best all right so check that out the, the most high is the ruler of the earth not you edomites all right uh elder apostle Aramla got on to uh i didn't see the show but i saw the title so i know he was getting into uh elon musk you know the chips and probably those things i gotta watch that video but another brother was giving me the skinny of it a little bit, you know, getting into the words and stuff like that, you know. And um, Esau wants to be the most high, but you can't. The scriptures say, as the clay is in the potter's hand. All right. So guess what? Where the clay and the most high is the potter. And when you potter something and you forming, you know, uh, ves vessels. You know, you have to image, you have to put this in your mind. When a potter is forming vessels, you know, he's shaping and shaping as he go, as he please. So if he shapes something fat, it's going to be fat. If he shapes something skinny, it's going to be skinny. That's the way the Lord did unto us as people. He's chosen an elect. He's chosen his chosen, the nation, to himself, a seed. He's also made some to be wicked, which is the Edomites, the sons of the wicked. All right. And he also made the rest to be what? Sons of men. So you got the sons of the power. You got the sons of the wicked and you got sons of men. All right. That's the will of the most high. So that reminds me also a precept where it says, uh, why is dirt and ashes proud? Showing you that we're really nothing but dirt. We're little to the most high. So how can dirt be proud? You're dirt. And Esau, you beneath dirt. All right. He's taught. He said, you're the basis of men. You're the lowest among the heathen. All right. So anyway, it says, as the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure. So the Lord could do whatever he want. All right. When you see um certain guys being born and they on YouTube, they got disfigures, they deformed. You know, I saw one guy. His head was bigger than his body. He had no arms, no legs, and he had to roll around to get by. And this is his life. And he's healthy. He's well and healthy. All right. 
you got a woman that had like <clears throat> she had like these boils or like this skin disease and she was covered in it reminds me of Job, you know but she had to got to live her life through it she had it all her life so these are the works of the most high this is why scriptures say you fall in the hands of the most high all right you don't you don't want to fall in the hands of the terrible power man roughly paraphrasing the lord the lord will do worse unto you man and he's going to do worse unto the wicked man okay so it says as the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure so man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as liken him best good is set against evil and life against death so is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So this is the Lord's movie. The world is the Lord's movie. He said, earth is my footstool. Heaven is my throne. <laughs> All right. And he set up the good versus the evil. This is why every good movie in which these um, these elites, they got their directors and they come up with these stories, you know, and. They put these characters in there and they give them scripts, scripts, all right? Just like the scriptures, it's like a theater, all right? You got characters and he gives them scripts. They play out these scripts and what's the most best movie when you got the good versus the evil, you know? And everybody loves to see the good win at the end, all right? No matter who you are, it's a good movie when you see the good, the good get beat up, the good get demonized. The good just get messed up. Then what? The good start picking up toward the end. The middle. You see him kicking back. Then you see him get beat up some more. But then at the very end. He prevailed man. He persevered. Alright. And he come out on top. And he go yeah. Y'all that, love that movie. That's what's up right there. You know. The good versus the evil. And that's what's going on now. You know the brothers. The hopeful elect. The men out there teaching the truth. On the highways and byways, they are the good. Speaking against the evilness, man. And the evil right now, because it's more multitude of evil, you know, you demonize the good. All right. You misuse the good. You know, those that come in the righteousness and godliness of the Lord and speaking against the blasphemy, speaking against the idol worshiping, speaking against the, the homosexuality. All right. Good is set against evil. So this is the time we're living in. And life against death. Because what's life? Life is the Lord. Death is Esau. All right. You know, either you choose life to live or you just choose to die. And remember, the scriptures say, the Lord said, those that hate me love death. <laughs> Verse, uh, excuse me, let me read on. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly because you may catch yourself, you know, you got friends or whoever, homeboys, homegirl, whatever, you know, we talk to and shit and they not in the truth. You are. They start conversating and telling their business and saying what they going to do. What you picking up? The pride. You picking up their arrogancy. You picking up their, their um, you know, their, their, their ignorance because they don't have understanding. And then what you do, you try to correct them in a smooth way. Try to throw a bone in there. Maybe they'll catch it. But then all of a sudden, they come in at your neck. And it's like, why did you even try? Why would you even try? Because why? It is the godly against the sinner. You know, you keep, the sinner want to sin. You don't want to hear no godly stuff. You know, so the scriptures say, he that is ignorant, let him stay ignorant. He that is holy, let him stay holy. He that is righteous, let him stay righteous. All right. So it says, in the sinner against the godly, verse 15. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. All right, because the Lord is very balanced. He's a balanced scale. Okay, and uh, that's something we, us brothers, we pray, you know, if we could be like the Lord, be balanced, because we need it. You know, that's why the Most High created the evil. He created the good. He created the balance in the earth, and even in the kingdom of heaven, there's still going to be evil, and there's going to be the good, which is the Israelites. All right. And we're going to rule over the wicked. You know, the scriptures say he's going to uplift the curses off of us and he's going to put them on them. Roughly paraphrasing. All right. Now, I'm quoting these scriptures because I have the scriptures here, but I'm quoting precepts, you know, and if you want to see it, just 
you type in Google word for word what I said, the line, you know, and it should come up. You know, you got to work in this truth, man. All right. So Genesis chapter 50 and 20. Now, this is dealing with Joseph. All right. Because these are quick precepts that I just put together and I'm just bringing out through the spirit. All right. Uh, Genesis 50 and 20. This is about Joseph. When Joseph, his family, his brothers sold him, you know, should know the story. And um, it was a good deed, though. They thought of an evil deed upon Joseph to sell him, you know, get rid of him. But guess what? It was a good deed for the future. And that's what most of these scoffers, most of these haters, you know, Esau believes that, you know, him, that, oh, reminds me of uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Uh, he said, uh, we shall try them. <laughs> And let's see if they God is, let's see if they the ch child of the most high, roughly paraphrasing, because these Edomites think the hell that they're putting upon us is to destroy us. But in all reality, it's to purify us through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh So that's why, brothers, you know, we shouldn't fear death. The scriptures tell you not to fear man, but fear him that kills the body and soul in hell, man. Fear the most high, because the Lord, here it is, certain brothers do have to what? Be martyred, have to be beheaded. As the uh, prophecy is uh, uh, for the witness of Yahweh Shai, some brothers are going to die. You know, another scripture besides that, it says some shall not taste of death. So whoever it may be, could you know, whoever it is, we all have to take up that uh, cross, you know, and we have to understand that. Look, the Lord is greater. He's, he's the greater. He's the greater power and everything is done for our purification. If you sincerely in this truth, you would think of it in, in that way. You would have that understanding. All right. So it says, but as for you, uh, but as for you, now this is Joseph speaking. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but the most high meant it unto, the, unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. All right. And that's why <laughs> when it deals with the Lord's elect, see, they thought the evil of us when they demonize us, the social media and the mainstream and all these things are going to going to come back around again. And they're going to be intensified. May put brothers pictures up at that time and call them terrorists and brothers didn't do anything. But guess what? They thought that to be evil against us. Right. But it says, but the most high meant it unto good because it's going to show the power in the Lord. You know, brother, you know, you'd be the first one on the chariot coming back with your new body, man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, praise y'all watching me. I was shy, man. It says, but the most high meant, unto, meant it unto good. To bring to pass, excuse me. To bring to pass. It's a lie. To bring to pass at it, at it Shut is. Shut up, Apostle coming back at you with this. It's like, yeah. Let me read it again, Salaki. Um, Genesis 50 and 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but the Most High meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. All right. That reminds me of the elect. <laughs> All right. Because when the elect, you know, going through the hell and the fire that they, that they go to, go through. You know, being purified and made white in the end when they being saved, guess what? All Israel is being saved. All right. When the Lord saved the elect, now the rest of Israel can come back out being perfect, man. So second Timothy chapter four, 17, it says, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me, the preacher might be fully known. And that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And I will and I will preserve it's like it, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. I'm one. All right. And that speaks for itself. Now, it says to strengthen me that. By me, the preacher might be fully known. All right. So the men of the Lord that's out there teaching all the way to the end, enduring all the way to the end, not looking back. It's because the preaching and the word of the Lord have to be fully known throughout the earth. And what the Lord said, he said, when this gospel go forth through the four corners of the earth, 
then shall the end come. So this word have to be fully known. All right. It says in that all Gentiles might hear because guess what? We were Gentiles as well. We was in that Gentile frame of mind. You know, the Lord called his people Gentiles after he dispersed them and kicked them out of the land and had all types of slavery come upon us, man. Troubles. Our people didn't know who we were when we came here to the Western world. All right. And they lost who they were. You know, now the Lord has given us back his, that power and that starts with his name. And that's and then it comes with the, the, the Rakakodash, Kodash, spirit, holy, the Holy Spirit. All right. Because the Holy Spirit now teaches you, sups with you, which is the Lord's spirit, his word. Now you repent, you know, you uh, repent, come back to the Lord. You know, you work out your differences with the Lord and you make things right by doing doing the will of the Lord. Sacrificing faith without works is dead, man. So you got to have works. You got to work now. All right. So it says. Um, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto the heavenly kingdom, unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. I'm on. Right. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So this is the evil. This is the good versus the evil. And what is the evil? The evil is what you really can't see. The evil is the principalities, the spirits. All right. Where it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So this is not a carnal war. It's more so a spiritual war. It's a war within yourself. It's a war with you. And your thoughts, society wants, Esau got so many um, devices out here that it's no way in hell that you should be worshiping and serving Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. There's no way. But guess what? The elect, the Lord made a way for the elect. Because despite all the devices and the confusion and and uh, the distractions, the Lord had that man's, had that one eye, man. All right. He had his mind set on the kingdom. You know, no matter what troubles come upon him, his mind, his eye is still set upon the kingdom. All right. He persevered through the troubles. You know, that's the elect. And that's why it goes back into the, the difference between the elect within the elect. All right. The chosen within the chosen because you have an election that's going to be delivered, man. All right. So it says, um. That's it on that. Let's get to the next one. This is Romans 8 and 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth that is in the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the Most High. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All right. So everything works for the good. All right, which is those who serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Don't think the Lord don't see you or know or see your works. You know, it says, and he that search of the hearts, that's Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, the mind, the spirit. It says, and he that search of the hearts knoweth what is what is the mind of the spirit. So he knows because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of Yahweh. All right, and Yahweh Shai is our mediator. Between us and the Most High, all right, and He does make an intercession for the saints, in which the saints represents Israelites, all right. In order to be a saint, you have to be an Israelite, all right. Verse twenty-eight, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are called according to His purpose. Verse uh, Isaiah five and twenty, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. All right. So you see, it's always the good versus the evil. So the Lord said, woe, which woe represents death and destruction. So woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. So let's see who's really in the wrong. Let's see who's really in the right. You got scoffers scoffing the men of the Lord. You got guys that's teaching for contention and strife. 
strife and contention. You got guys that's teaching for vain glory. You got unity camps. You got these guys coming together with different doctrines, which it doesn't make sense. Clearly against the against the Lord. Really showing you that them guys are hypocrites. Because the Lord said, cast out the beam out of thy own eye. Then thou be able to cast out the beam that out of thy own out of thy brother's eye. Excuse me. All right. So you got to clean up your act. That means that you, you know, not only you get away the sin, but then you teach someone the correct way. Well, how can they do that in a unity camp when they're holding back their sword on each other? You know, just for the sake of getting a, going along to get along. That shit wicked, man. You're a hypocrite. All right. You're not letting that guy know that that what he's what he's saying is wrong. And then what that guy is saying is right. You know. So it says, woe unto them, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And you call us evil here at Great Millstone because of the brothers exposing or or open rebuke on on those on these matters. Oh, GMS, some haters, you know, all oh, them guys, the most despicable camp, you know, and all this and all that, you know, when here it is, it's love. It's for correction. Because the Lord said, there will be no cloak for your sin. If he have not come, there will be no cloak. All right. There will be no excuse. If, you know, if Yahweh Shah didn't come, now there's no excuse. Let me say it right. There's no excuse because Yahweh Shah came. The word. And this is what you're going to be judged off, of, judged off of. Your pride, man. You know, you know. So it says uh, that put darkness for light. Right. You know, you'd rather put darkness for light. Let's all band together to do rap videos. And let's say F them that's getting on us about it. You know, it says and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. All right. That's that pride, man. Uh, Second Thessalonians three and three. But the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil. All right. Uh, that's to the point. Romans 12 and 21. Be not overcome. Be not overcome of evil. But overcome evil with good. Because you're not supposed to render evil for evil. You know. Someone do evil to you. It's not okay for you to do evil to them. We got to pray unto the Lord. And cast them curses up. And those prayers up. That the Lord bring misfortune upon that person. You know. <laughs> Especially, you know, if they're a brother, then, hey, you got to, you know, uh, uh, forgive a brother if he asks for forgiveness, man. You know, so it's ways of balancing. You have to know these things, man. All right. And when, who to hate and who to forgive. You have to know that, too. You know, it's all a balance, man. You know, when the Lord said when we pray, we got to pray to forgive our faults against the brother and things of that nature. So it's all balanced. Balance. You got to know, you know. Uh, all right, so this is um, Isaiah fifty four seventeen. No weapon is formed against me. Uh, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. These, the, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord Yahweh, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And that's that's deep because that shows you. You know, for us out there prophesizing and the world hates us and it believes that we this and we that. And we don't come in the true name of the Lord. Well, the Lord is through this scripture. He's showing you that he vouch for these men. That's teaching the truth. A hundred percent truth. Correcting, reproving, rebuking, exhorting the name of the Lord. Because it's all about reproving. Israel's, you know, hard headed stiff neck. All right. So you have to rebuke. You have to reprove. All right. Then you what? Ex then you, ex you know, you also all do that. Or, excuse me. Do all of that. You exhort in the name of the Lord. You know, that's what the Lord is about. It's, the, it's about correcting, man. You know, being on one accord, one mind. All right. So it says no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, Yahweh, and their righteousness is of me. Say of the Lord Yahweh. So the scriptures say, if we be of if we be for the most high, who can come against us? Well, if the most high be for us, who can come against us? Salakia. All right. Who if the most high be for us, who can come against us? All right. 
And it's my last precept. Proverbs 8 and 13. The fear of the Lord Yahweh is to hate evil. So if you claim that you're righteous and you claim that you Bible based, you Bible bound, you believe in God and you know, you believe in the book as the word said, then you supposed to be fighting against the evil. But instead, you got Vocab Malone and them, these characters, Christianity, Catholic. They want to come against the brothers that's teaching the truth, especially here, us brothers in Great Millstone. But then he can't he can't um, come at the, 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 uh, the wickedness that goes on in the Catholic Church. He can't talk about the RFID microchip, the mark of the beast. You notice that these guys don't have they're not in these other different subjects. You know, see, we able through the spirit of the Lord to deal with they shit and then also still prophesize and, and um, watch the world, watch everything that's going on. But these guys are so focusing on us because they paid agents, man. They are the demons. All right. So the Proverbs 8 and 13. And if you say the Lord said you can't hate, then you're not reading the scriptures. This is the King James Version. All you got to do is look it up. And it says it right here. So that's a cut on the on the government churches. Oh, God, don't hate. God, don't hate. I haven't heard someone say that in a while. I think they might be getting out of it because normally people come up to us and they first thing they say, God, don't hate. God, don't hate. I haven't heard them say that in a while. But this is your, your uh, teachings in the government church that God is all love. Right. So this is Proverbs 8 and 13. The fear of the Lord, Yahweh, is to hate. Evil. So if you fear the Lord, the most high, you're going to hate evil. What is evil? Homosexuality. All right. Um, the foul foods, things that you're not supposed to be eating. All right. Crab, shrimp, lobster and pork. Idol worshiping. Um, uh, uh, worshiping pagan holidays. Anything that's transgressed against the laws of the Lord. You're supposed to hate it. Adultery. All right. All of that, man. It says pride and arrogancy. And the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. So you can't get no more than that, man. You can't tell me that the, the word don't talk about hate. So us, the good, you know, going back up to the topic, good versus evil, Jacob versus Esau. So I uh, hope you was edified. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakodash. I like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's who for elect. Shalom.